The face-to-face -face battle on the fiercest front in Ukraine? The eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, where soldiers are suffering from the bone-chilling cold and lack of equipment, is currently the fiercest front in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. When Nazar, a Ukrainian soldier, and his comrades reached the village near the key city of Bakhmut that they were ordered to attack, they thought they would only be there for a day. So people came without sleeping bags or food because of the heavy snow on the ground. They clashed with 50 Russian soldiers, instead of 15 as had been warned, causing the battle to drag on for several days. There were places where we were just 100 meters apart, Nazar recalls. We were on a low hill and they were on another. Sometimes we could even hear them laughing. For the 19-year-old machine gunner of this 24th motorized brigade, this was his first battle since the end of his training. Meanwhile, for many other soldiers in this battalion, this is just one of a series of battles they have fought in the Donbass region, in Popozna, in Kherson and later in Bakhmut, the besieged city in the east and is now the fiercest front of the hostilities. Even about 8 kilometers from Bakhmut, in an icy landscape where all the roads were covered in a thick layer of ice, the sound of heavy rockets and artillery continuously firing on the front lines could still be heard. Russian soldiers have spent nearly six months fighting in the muddy and cold trenches, trudging through the fields and dense forests of eastern Ukraine, trying to break through this area and reach the cities. Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, and Konstantinovka. On December 9, the heaviest fighting took place near the towns of Bakhmut and Audyuka when there was information about Russian shelling along the front lines of the Donetsk region. The whole front line is under shelling, said Pavlo Karolenko, regional governor. At least five people were killed and two were injured. Although civilians still live in the towns and villages around Bakhmut, conflict continues everywhere. Tanks hid among the trees waiting to move to the firing position, while in the narrow streets, armored vehicles and cars carrying soldiers continuously passed between the front and rear. Farther on at rally points, ambulances and rescue crews shivered in the cold, waiting by the trenches to evacuate the wounded. When Ukrainian artillery and rockets fired, the Russian side fired back within minutes. However, Ukrainian soldiers said that when the Russian side created a long artillery barrage and stopped suddenly, that was when they had to worry. Because that means Russian infantry will quickly come rushing in within a minute. The story of Nazar and his comrades is very familiar to many who are fighting on this devastating front. Their bit of luck was probably because the distance between the two forces was too close, so the Russian side was unable to mobilize artillery. We could see them hiding behind trees and sniping in the dark, not wanting to stick their heads out, Nazar said. When several Russian soldiers died in the first engagement, the Russians began to act to push Nazar and his unit off the base hill. The Russian forces attacked in small groups at night, but their movements were detected by the Ukrainian side with thermal imaging. For the first few nights, Ukrainian soldiers had to manage without sleeping bags, lying on the frozen ground and burning fires to keep warm. Their scorched boots and clothes proof that they had sat near the flames. How? Then I found someone sleeping bag, and someone else discovered a sleeping mat. The cold was fierce. At first, we didn't have hot food, the water was frozen. Nazar said. Vasil, 29 and deputy battalion commander, fought in the area this summer, at the height of the Russian offensive to capture the cities of Lysychansk and Severodonetsk. Vasil said, the shelling then was more intense than now. Back then, they shelled everything. It was like a firewall. Now, they seem to have less ammunition and use it more sparingly. We got one of the sets. Their conversation during the recent fighting here. We heard the opposing group of Russian soldiers calling and asking for ammunition support. Vasil's team said that when the Russians attack, there are usually very few tanks to support, and infantry is dropped with the requirement to attack in a certain direction. The town of Bakhmut has become an important target for both sides with both Russia and Ukraine sending troops from Kherson province and elsewhere to bolster their forces there. They used soldiers from the Wagner Private Military Corporation as the strike force. They used the newly mobilized soldiers to defend the positions. We could see them from the drone. Driving. They looked chaotic. That's why we were able to do so much damage to the Russian side, Vasil said. For many soldiers on this front, Russia's determination to control Bakhmut is tough. Even if Russia captured the city, the Ukrainian side pointed out that the terrain outside was even harder to attack and well defended. While waiting for their next mission, Nazar reflected on the situation in the village they had just left, the Russians had not attacked in the past three days. In three days it's his birthday. I'll be 20. Our next mission might come on my birthday. 
He paused for a moment, then continued, or maybe today. Guardian, Reuters.